I think that just as we're living in a nuclear age, we have grown so tremendously in scientific knowledge, it doesn't seem uh, too much to say that men can begin to awaken to the fact that they have, haven't grown enough spiritually and haven't recognized their spiritual capacities. Once something like eating is death, then you've struck at the very heart of life. The enemy of the older radical theories may have been the ruling class, but today the stakes of whether we will reform ourselves into a new kind of human being, a new kind of society, whether we will find selves worth being, the stakes of it are simply life itself. Political philosophy is a Morin Academy show, and today I want to kind of link what we're doing in the Morin Academy with what I'm doing here by beginning a series on a book that is being discussed in our communal reading group. Um, it's The Personalist Manifesto by Emmanuel Mounier. And I want to just tell you a little bit about Mounier today. Um, but just to remind you on Dust Bowl Diatribes, our podcast, um, Spencer and I have been discussing with Rich Myrick and uh, previously other people, you know, trying to tease out what was going on in the late 19th and going into early to mid 20th century that caused a new way of thinking to develop. Um, and personalism was one of those philosophies that developed um, during this period of time. And Emmanuel Mounier was um, a leading thinker uh, in this movement, if not a uh, sort of founder of it. Um, and so I'm going to concentrate on the Personalist Manifesto and also his later work, Personalism. Um, and the two of them together uh, will give a pretty good picture of what personalism was for uh, Mounier. Um, we think that this is important for recovering what people were thinking about at a time when it was very clear, very, very clear that some of the changes that had taken place, such as, um, you know, industrialization, the collectivization of labor under capitalism, um, the, uh, you know, the, the ongoing um, sort of enlightenment thinking of applying scientific systematic thinking to human labor and human organization, um, and on and on, that, that there was a growing realization that these things were leading to catastrophic catastrophic events, um, strong reaction to uh, World War I, for instance, in this regard, and, you know, during the interwar period, a really um, gut-wrenching realization that a lot of human innovations had not been used in a way that actually uh, benefited humanity, and as a matter of fact, were dehumanizing. Um, and so this question of what does it mean to be a human being was central to these people. So let me get into Mounier just a little bit. So this is a picture of the young Emmanuel Mounier. Um, as you can see there, he did not live a long life, but he lived a life that was a, a high impact. Um, and probably the chief impact of this man's life was the development of the personalist philosophy. Now, I, I mentioned that he could be seen as a founder of it or a father of it before. I want to make it clear that personalism is a type of philosophy that's more like a, a way of thinking about people that has many strands, many of which developed earlier, and that were put together in a way at this point in time where people became more conscious of it as a distinct philosophy. But it actually is not as highly systematic as maybe other political philosophies are because um, of the subject matter of the human person um, and all of its complexity. So anyway, uh, like I said, we're going to talk mainly about a personalist manifesto, which is a foundational work um, that uh, Mounier authored um, and in the spirit of always going back to the original source, this is why maybe the focus on this and not as much on personalism, the later work, although normally I would say 
reading the later work is better. So we're going to combine the two because the later work shows the culmination of the man's thought. But the fact that his last work was personalism means that throughout his short life, he uh, was relatively consistent in his uh position and in, in his interest and position. Um, as I said, it personalism roughly is a is a response to so many things that had happened in such a short period of time relative to human history, industrialization, mechanization, the collectivization of labor under industrial capitalism, fragmentation of human experience in the development of the organizational structure necessary for people to work in an industrial um, setting, and the loss of community that occurs when people are working in that setting for most of their day separately from their family. In fact, one of the things that I hope that we can get from reading this book together, so to speak, um, is, is to kind of try to remember what life was like prior to industrialization. Yeah, it wasn't all great, but there were differences that are significant that we need to remember because we have to know what we lost. And actually we lost those things slowly over a long period of time in different places, quicker, slower, and so on. And my interview with my father um, that I aired last week, you'll, you'll realize that even in the United States in the uh, you know mid 20th century, um, people some, in some parts of the country were still able to achieve a relative amount of independence because they could still, for instance, feed themselves directly off the land and didn't need any or a lot of money. They had family relationships that were, you know, well connected and maintained that allowed them to survive the Great Depression. In other places in the country that had already um, really uh, started to disintegrate and it was soon to disintegrate else, elsewhere, including in his own area. So, um, you know, that's just a reminder that we can't make definitive statements about exactly when these things happen. They're slow. They're kind of, uh, you know, they happen at different places in different times uh, at different speeds. But in general, we can say that Emmanuel Mounier, he could see that this was ongoing and he could he could glimpse what was being lost and that he shares with the romantic movement of authors like William Blake, this consciousness um, of earlier, this consciousness of, of what we are losing and this fear that we are um, losing our humanity and hence the focus on personalism. So uh, one of the things that Mounier developed was the Esprit Journal which is actually still going on. He founded it in 1932 as part of the nonconformism movement that he uh, helped inspire. Nonconformism was a third way way of thinking. Uh, these people didn't want to conform either to capitalist collectivization or um, the new you know, socialist agenda, which used collectivization um, supposedly for the interests of the masses rather than the few. But in both cases, uh, these people saw way too much collectivization, way too much sort of depersonalization and dehumanization. dehumanization. Um, and so Esprit Journal was born in this context and actually still survives to this day. So after a, a bit, I will show you um, a, a little bit of that journal if you want to take a look. So anyway, we're going to be looking at this concept of personalism, um, not only historically, but also in light of what's happening now, because we are far from being done with this ongoing transformation of humanity into sort of melding with the machine. Um, and now we're a long way down that road, and we have the development of artificial intelligence and, and so on. So, you know, we have a, we have a vast integration of um, machine technology and computing technology with the human person already, even prior to AI. And AI just kind of kind of brings it, uh, brings that mesh enmeshment into focus. So the uh, personalism is supposed to be a sort of antidote for this, at least as far, as far as clarification of thinking about it, right? Which is a first step 
you know, if we can't think about what's going on, we can't do anything else. So personalism is this, it is a third way philosophy that emphasizes the uniqueness of each person. And it, you know, the notion here is that each person has a unique interior existence that is not replicable, replicable. And it is not something that is penetrable by uh, something like machines or artificial intelligence or organizational structures. And that unique aspect of each and every human being must be valued for its own sake. And, uh, you know, thinkers like Mounier tied that up with human beings are this created, this created being, right, which was created um, to be a spiritual being, to be, in a sense, uh, the imago dei, the image of God. In other words, you know, the notion that the human personality was, uh, is, is a, is a sort of precious and unique thing, right? Um, that is godlike in a way, and that must be, um, for ethical reasons, protected and fostered. And, you know, a variety of people took this up. Some of them were more secular, some of them were more religious. Um, one of the most famous people who took up and developed personalism extensively was Carol Wojita, uh, who was Pope John Paul II. Um, and whose works are just um, teeming with the development of personalist thought. Um, another person who uh, I have done quite a bit of work on this channel um, about is uh, Jacques Ellul. Jacques Ellul was a type of personalist, and his personalism um, edged into you know, the human relationality with God as well as with the environment. Um, so it had the personalism actually has a lot of legs, has a lot of uh, influence on um, on on the development of later thought. A uh, human being is unique and also unique in relationality, meaning you know whether it's relationship with God or with other human beings. That there's this aspect of the human person which is which is intimately uh, relational that get, that can only become fully human and fully flourishing in relationship with others of a genuine type in which the two souls actually touch, so to speak, that the two or more souls actually understand and know each other deeply as unique, dignified, special human, human persons. Uh, <clears throat> And this is exactly the type of understanding of human beings that modern mechanization and collectivization and organiza organizational structures um, it, it just sort of naturally break down, break down that, that type of you know, human understanding, human personality. So, so you can see why, you know, for sure, um, these people are so interested in it. OK, I wanted to show you just a little uh, something here. This is actually from the Personalism website, um, which is a website dedicated to trying to tease out what personalism means and has some pretty good information. So I thought I would just read this biography to you. It's very short, um, but it'll help sort of establish who he was, too. Um, in Western Europe, French thinker Emmanuel Mounier uh, developed personalism into a more political and activist movement. In 1932, he founded the periodical Esprit, which became the main outlet for personalism and attained great influence, not least in France. As a young philosophy graduate in the early 1930s, Mounier was shocked by the financial collapse and the world order that caused such human suffering. This experience led him to the insight that human responsibility is not abstract and impersonal, but very concrete and personal. Mounier sees the modern civilization as fundamentally derailed by materialism, individualism, and capitalism. He therefore calls for a nonviolent cultural revolution to pave the way for a total reconstruction of our civilization. A personalist society, according to Mounier, should aim to guarantee human rights and prevent the state and other institutions from violating the personal domains of human life. Positively defined, 
personalism wishes to organize society so as to develop in every level a maximum of initiative, resp initiative responsibility, community, and decentralization. Mounier sees the capitalist market economy as a good method for meeting our material needs, but he is an indignant critic of the all-encompassing dominance that capitalism has attained. Liberalism tends, in the name of freedom, to destroy freedom and initiative by handing them over to capitalist oppression. Collectivism protects society from being dominated by a particular interest, but has a tendency to bind freedom and concede power to just one party or social class. Personalism attempts to retain the collective as well as freedom through an economy in which, for instance, big industry consists of self-governing institutions, but within a mandate issued by society. The program presented by Mounier for analyzing, breaking, and replacing the order of his time is put forward systematically in a personalist manifesto from 1938 uh, and personalism 1952. He stresses that the program does not contain definitive solutions, but rather presents a way of thinking and living. Personalism is not a system. It is a perspective, a method, and a demand. So I found that to be uh, very concise. Uh, I also found the Spree magazine, uh, which if you understand French or you can use your computer to translate, you can find some interesting articles here. The spirit is still of personalism. Uh, and I have not read very much of this, so I can't tell you how closely they hew to personalism still, but I think it's probably worth taking a look and then I found on the Jacques Ellul website, which you can go to the International Jacques Ellul Society, of which I am a member, uh, hopefully in good standing, um, has a little article on Ellul and personalism, which you can look up. And if you Google uh, John Paul II or Carol Wojitla uh, and personalism, you will find all of the pre-papacy you know, references as well as references to personalism in um, John Paul II's encyclicals. And you will realize that, you know, his way of thinking was part of, in this regard, was part of this trajectory, right? Um, you know, a lot, a lot of people don't know that much about uh, the inspiration, the historical inspiration behind some of John Paul II's ideas. So I uh, wanted to show you that. Also want to remind people to take a look at the Morin Academy website. We have a class coming up on the gift economy, um, but I realize that this video will outlast that uh, offering by quite a bit. Um, the best thing to do is to go to our website and check out the classes that, and se series and sessions that we're offering uh, now. So. Uh, I will be back hopefully next week with some more information about personalism and getting into the personalist manifesto.